The TTS programming journey offers robotic experiences for children from early years to 12 years old, and this is delivered through Go and Glowbot, Beebot, Bluebot, Rugged Robot, Lottiebot, and Ottiebot. And whilst these robots are perfect for delivering computational thinking in your classroom, they far exceed delivering computing outcomes alone and can be used for active learning across the curriculum. At the earliest part of the programming journey, we have Glow and Gobot. She is perfect for babies and toddlers in the early foundation stage, as she begins to introduce the idea of pattern recognition, of movement through cause and effect, and her movements are very literal. So when the children ask her to move left and right, she literally moves to the left and to the right. This is great for children at this cognitive stage of development as they move into their pre-operational stage. Once the learners are ready to move on from Glow and Go Bot, Beebot and Bluebot are the natural progression. Both of these robots offer a screen-free programming experience, directly programming onto the robots themselves. And with Bluebot, children are able to also use the tactile reader and, when they are ready, progress through to the iOS and Android app. So before we jump into some ideas about how we can implement active learning with our younger bots, first of all, we'll have a look at how they help to deliver a multi-sensory approach in the classroom. So if we take Beebot, although B and Blue are exactly the same on the robot themselves, they have these lovely buttons that the children use to program the robot. They offer a really satisfying tactile response and they allow the children to fully understand the link between the inputs that they've made on the robot and the output that the robot then executes when they press go. Embodied cognition theory tells us that cognitive understanding and neuroplasticity is increased when we have bodily experiences. So having the robots move in front of us and being able to interact with that helps to achieve a deeper learning. Similarly, using any robot in the TTS programming journey can be used to provide contextual learning. So we can embed real life, real world examples into what we're teaching students, whether that's working on a robotics map like this or dressing the robots up to be a firefighter or a paramedic. Those types of real life experiences help for more deeper focused attention and greater learning. Continuing with the multi-sensory approach, both Beebot and Bluebot are able to have audio messages recorded to each of their buttons, and that provides an audio output when they execute that command. The final part of the multi-sensory approach when working with these robots is utilising the tactile reader alongside Bluebot. The tactile reader is a really great device for visually representing the algorithm that the children have constructed, and this allows for a number of different things. To begin with, it's easier for greater collaboration. Children can work together whilst using the tactile reader. Children can also visually see the algorithm that they have chosen to create, and if it doesn't do what they expect it to do or what they want it to do, they can debug more easily than they could do just using the robot alone. Three tactile readers can be daisy chained together, so you can have a really large algorithm that, with the extension pack, can also include iteration. The tactile reader can also be used to support inclusivity in your lessons. So for example, being able to visually represent the algorithm is great for children that have a lower working memory than their peers because they can see everything that the robot is about to do. And the tactile reader lights up and indicates which stage it's working on as the program is executed. Additionally, when paired with a robot, so when paired with Bluebot or with Rugged Robot, the child does not have to sit on the floor with the robots if that's not a possibility for them. They can actually sit in their standing frame or they can sit in their wheelchair or at their desk and still use the robot in the same way as their peers. Finally, the tactile reader can support children that have a greater command of their gross motor skills rather than their fine motor skills. So some children will find using the tiles and this approach easier than using the small buttons on the robot itself. Active learning is a constructivist approach to learning that puts children and experimentation at the centre. So problem solving and the computational skills that come with that are perfect delivered through the programming journey. So challenge based learning, particularly using a robotic map or if it's appropriate for your children through the apps that is absolutely packed full of challenges, particularly the Bluebot app, is a really great way to motivate students. Uh, children love a challenge and they love to um, play against each other and have a objective to fulfill within the lesson. Another great way to embed active learning is through role play. So as I've already mentioned, having the robots undertake a task that perhaps replicates something in the real world where the robots might be dressed up, whether that's using some of our resources or the children doing that themselves, is a great way to bring active learning into your classroom. And finally, peer teaching. 
The great thing about the programming journey is that whilst some children might progress onto the next robot, other children in the same class might still be working at a robot at a younger level. And that's brilliant because it means that some of your children can become teaching assistants or robotic assistants in your classroom and they can be used as peer teachers within the room, which better develops their skills and their understanding of robotics. The Bluebot app increases in complexity, effectively scaffolding the use of iteration and debugging while providing a multi-sensory experience when connected to the robot. At its most complex level, Bluebot app replicates Scratch in the Blues Blocks section of the app, perfect for bridging the learning gap between using floor robots and then programming in Scratch. Rugged Robot is also a screen-free and app-enabled device. He is used in the great outdoors, as can be seen by his design. Often we see schools adopting to use Bluebot indoors and Rugged Robot outdoors. And the benefits of taking Rugged Robot outdoors are vast, not least because we know that research tells us we can better meet the holistic needs of our students outside. It helps to reduce stress and anxiety, but it's just much more fun. We have loads of space to be able to program, which really helps to um, have children collaborate with each other and communicate in a different way to the way they might inside the classroom. I'm often asked by schools why they might want to buy a rugged robot if they're already using Bluebot and Bebot in their classrooms. And my answer really is quite simple. Rugged Robot is designed for outdoors and we know that outdoors, the rules are different. Children behave differently outdoors. They take more risks. They problem solve differently. Their attitude to learning is completely different from inside a classroom to outside a classroom. And if we want to meet the needs of all of our learners, sometimes we might find that the shyest, timidest child in the classroom is actually the most actively engaged outdoors. One of Rugged Robot's unique features is that he has three separate torque settings, which provide more power to his motors. This means that when you are outdoors, whether you're traveling through short grass, long grass, mud, snow, the correct torque setting will mean that he can power through that particular terrain. And that opens up questions and discussions with the children about the physics of the different types of terrain and which torque setting might be most appropriate for him to use. So by having Rugged Robot available to your learners, you're offering a, an experiential and different, unique way of learning computational thinking. At this point in children's education, cognitively, they are moving into their concrete operational stage. And therefore, once children have exhausted the possibilities of Bebot, Bluebot and Rugged Robot, we recommend moving on to Lottiebot. Lottiebot has a wealth of sensors that provide constant data streams, which are perfect for inquiring minds that are starting to understand the world around them and logic and reasoning skills. So Lottiebot is a true STEM robot, and unlike the earlier robots in the range, this is where the robots change to no longer be programmed on the device themselves. So Lottiebot requires a tablet, either an Android or an iOS, to connect to her to fully utilise all of her features. Unlike the learnings that's taken place earlier on in the programming journey where we're programming the robots to move, Lottiebot starts to introduce the idea of inputs and outputs. She has a lot of sensors. She has a temperature sensor, a light sensor, proximity sensors, a sound meter and bumper sensors, and all of that rich data can be used and interpreted in the child's programming. Additionally, she also has a number of outputs. She has LED lights, she has a speaker that can make noise, she can draw, she can move very accurately. So all of the inputs and outputs can be brought together to start to teach higher level computing concepts, such as branching. So this is the first robot where we can truly introduce if-then statements, and we can also truly introduce mathematical operations. To support institutions that are using Lottiebot to jump from screen-free programming to screen programming, we actually have a level one part of the app, which allows for a junior block-based programming environment and helps to bridge the knowledge gap between programming on the device and programming in Scratch. At the very top of our programming journey, we have the lovely Ottibot. And Ottibot is different again to all of the robots in the range. He is our only humanoid-esque robot. And the reason that we have developed him is because it's quite normal that our children, when they grow up, their society will be full of service robots and social robots that they will interact with on a daily basis. They may not work with robotics, but they will be served in a restaurant or checked into a hotel by a robotic device. These things already exist. It's not something that will happen in the future. It's something that's happening now. And what we want to do is introduce children to the concept of working alongside social robotics. So whilst he's still programmable and whilst the children can still use him to achieve computing outcomes, it's also important for them to start to have a familiarity and a comfortableness around working with social robots. 
So, because of that reason, we've developed him very differently to all of the other robotic devices in the range. Whilst global curricula in computer science haven't quite caught up with some of the newer technologies in the world, Ottibot has been designed to be future-proof and therefore an investment for a school. He already has capabilities in machine learning. You can see here that he has a camera which can be used for a variety of things, one of which is to facially recognise. So he can be trained to recognise faces of students in your class or adults in your school and responds to them differently depending on how he has been programmed. He is upgradable, so as further technological advancements take place, we can upgrade his firmware without having to replace him with a brand new robot. And also his hardware is upgradable, so his tummy can be removed and a different tummy can be added, which means that he's really versatile in your classroom and can be used to teach all of those rich real world experiential events like delivering something to a table, for example, here, or moving something from one place to another, but also he can be used cross-curricularly as well. So in conclusion, our programming journey provides the perfect set of experiences educationally to deliver both computational thinking, but also to deliver our four C's and active learning across the curriculum, right from Glow and Go Bot to Ottibot.